Mm, thank you, dear. Perfect. Mm. Refreshing? Excellent. So we could get on and start discussing about Mary Sidney Herbert. Mary Sidney Herbert. Her poetry is simply incredible, of course. What to discuss today? Yes. This is what we'll do. We will talk about Even Now That Care and To the Angel Spirit. Both of these poems are viewed as complementary to one another. They have very strong political messages. A. In the establishment of the Protestant faith and B. The subversion of patriarchal restriction on female speech. If you look at the subtext of these two poems, they seem to be advising Elizabeth to really fall into her role as the Protestant queen. Take the first poem, for example. Herbert alludes to her brother's death, who, they believe, fought in defense of the Protestant faith against Spain at the Battle of Zufin. Unfortunately, the poor lad died during this battle from a gunshot wound to the leg. She invokes her brother's duty and good will to protect the Protestant faith by referring to his personified character's duty and goodwill from his sonnet sequence, Astrophel and Stella. <laughs> it's quite funny, actually. Her brother and the queen had a rocky relationship, and her family believed that if the queen hadn't withheld funds during this battle with Spain, Sidney would have actually survived. So, by invoking her brother's memory, she is in fact reminding the queen of her duty to protect the people, and to establish the Protestant faith. In Even to the Angel Spirit, the adamatory praise usually reserved for the Queen is used for Herbert's brother. At points, she calls her brother the Divine, juxtaposes him with a phoenix, which implies that he equals Christ, and like Christ, rises from the dead. At one point, she basically asserts her brother is now in heaven, where, and I quote, never envy bites. So what would this be, if not a reference to the Queen's relationship with Philip? Philip was well respected and praised internationally, but the same cannot be said in Elizabeth's court. So Herbert's apothesis of Philip Sidney's spirit implies the Queen would have been a better ruler, worthy even to be compared to Christ, were she to follow in Philip's footsteps. <laughs> it's pure genius, isn't it? Sometimes... I wonder, I wonder what she was thinking when she wrote these poems. She directed, she directed to the Queen, as in the highest power in England, these highly politicized poems with no apology for her gender, as apologizing was common for women to do at the time. This woman had agency. She plays with gendered language and says at one point in Even Now That Care that, quote, a king should only to a queen be sent. Her comparison of Queen Elizabeth to David is a powerful political statement as Elizabeth comes to occupy David's space in the poem by becoming the monarch who now holds the key to the right faith. Also, Herbert's weaving metaphor is certainly an allusion to female power. She claims this domesticated chore as a weapon. She uses it to finish the arduous task of translating Psalms 45 to 50. This also echoes Penelope, who deceives her male suitors by pretending to weave. Similarly, Herbert deceives the patriarchal restrictions against female speech by writing a very powerful political message in the guise of flowery poetry. She continuously makes allusions to female power, and by doing so, to her intelligence and her education. Brittlemart, for one, see Herbert's emphasis on bold in stanza 4, lines 25, I believe. In Spencer's Canto 3, book 7, Brittlemart encounters the words, Be bold everywhere, that is, until she sees, Be not too bold at one spot. Brittlemart is a female knight. Herbert's invoking such a figure in her writing is telling. She perceives what she is doing, her political writing, as restricted to men, and yet, like Brittlemart, she wants to encompass this space. She also refers to the Fate Sisters, who wield the power to cut anyone's life, and, I would dare say, since they were able to override any god's command, including Zeus, for who will live or die, they are undeniably embolic of female power. 
while fates are coupled with the graces, as is done strategically in lines 64 to 65, you are certainly faced with fem feminine beauty, grace, fertility, as, represented, as representative of female power. She emphasizes knowledge throughout the poem, suggesting she is an equal in education to her male contemporaries. So, essentially, when we join her emphasis on her education and her literary knowledge with her very powerful politicized, prote politicized excuse me, Protestant agenda, we get a very deliberate subversion of uh, patriarchal authority. She makes no apologies for being female, but places herself as a woman, an advisor to the Protestant queen in her narrative. Essentially, if she is barred from politics because of her agenda, then she will use her pen as a weapon, and through this, resist limitations on her speech and participation in politics. Shake your booty, Monica. <laughs> oh, whoa. Not okay for Renaissance students. Okay, no, perfect. Cool. Um.